lifetime and my experience so often. Don't need to take Sunday and Sunday of those public benefits that are muted. Greater joy is present. Still muted because it's Advent, but and then also the organ being muted and being able to be played throughout the Mass uh, or at different times in the Mass. Historically, for me, and I'm sure you found this as well, I connected it so often with the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And we just had Our Lady of Guadalupe's Feast Day this past Thursday. And so on this donating Sunday, I would like to speak more about Our Lady of Guadalupe. We've left up the beautiful shrine here with the plot of the roses that were presented to her. And it feels like such an honor to even stand here behind the Our Lady's picture and to speak about her. But it's, and of Our Lady, there's never enough. De Maria Posati says, Saints have said. So we do well to speak about our Blessed Mother. And there's a very strong connection with today's liturgy on uh, the third Sunday of Advent. Um, I could be mistaken on this, and I would certainly welcome information to the contrary. But what it, uh, another amazing thing, amazing realization about the Toma, this image of Our Lady. It's a photograph of Our Lady. We know that there are many, many paintings of Our Lady. Among them, the very famous paintings of Our Mother Perpetual Health, but a painting is not a facsimile reproduction in the way that a photo is. And we watched a video on uh, at our wonderful Guadalupe dinner celebration on Feast of Our Lady that explains these marvels, so many marvels about this, and we keep discovering more miracles about this. This is enough to prove the Catholic faith. It's the only religion that has miracles. And among these miracles, oh, remember last Sunday, our Lord told the disciples of St. John, don't tell them what you have seen, the blind see, the way you walk. These miracles happen. This is God proving his message. Our Lord proved his message. He proved that he was the Messiah. God has favored this church throughout our history with many, many miracles. As St. Augustine says, even if there were no miracles in the history of the church, the very fact that an institution like this could last for thousands of years is a miracle in and of itself. But God went beyond that. He gave miracles. And just as we have what you call a photographic reproduction of Our Lady, we also have one for our Lord. Remember the Shroud of Turin? That's what makes it so special among so many miracles. It's a photograph of our Lord's body just before or at the moment of his resurrection. And that's been existing for 2,000 years. The Tilma of Our Lady of Juan Diego has been existing, it's getting close to 500 years. Flan can't survive. Flan. Flan cannot have a, a image imposed on it that's not painted and it seems to float in the fibers themselves. So this is our Catholic faith. This is the privilege of being a Catholic. We have these most amazing miracles. We may still be finding out more miraculous aspects about the shroud, about our babies. As the video last Thursday told us that 
you know, in 1929 that we discovered the reflection of Juan Diego's image in the in Our Lady's eye. Now, what painter could have ever thought of that or had the skill and wherewithal to do it? It doesn't exist. But then with advanced technology, we can discern the figures of all the people that were in the room. When Juan Diego opened his tomb and the miraculous roses fell out and even the more miraculous image was imposed on his tomb and it's still there today. Monument. Is that what I mean? It's interesting too from that video that we saw is that Our Lady up close identified with the Aztecs. She was of their, it could be of their race, the coloration, the face. But that was a sort of special mark of her love for these people. Recently emerging from a terrible, uh, bloodthirsty culture that killed so many people. But she loved them, and she said, I am going to look like you. But then when you look at Our Lady Guadalupe from a further distance, she seems to be more of a, uh, of a general, general type of features of a lighter complexion. And the hidden message there, maybe not so hidden, is she's also for everybody. She came especially for these people. How lucky the people of Mexico are to have her and their national patroness. But these other aspects show that she came for everyone. And I said there was a connection with today's message or theme, this, this, uh, this joy which is somewhat suppressed. It's still a growing joy as we get closer to, to Christmas. But let's listen to these words of the epistle again. And it's also in the intro. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your modesty be known to all men. The Lord is not. And depending on the Uchifu translation of the Holy Scriptures, it is it's either moderation or modesty, but they really are synonyms here of virtue, of a of a holy restraint. And the point that I want to make here today is that when we look at Our Lady of Guadalupe, we can see her right here. I can say that this is the perfect exemplification of St. Paul's words here. Rejoice of the Lord always. What did Our Lady say when St. Elizabeth praised her? Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Despite her most incredible sorrows and sufferings, there was that sense of joy that was still there. She has rejoiced in the Lord. St. Paul tells us to do it. Our Lady has done it better than anybody else. Nobody can begin to match her. Let your modesty or moderation be known to all men. Is Our Lady of Guadalupe not a perfect example of this moderation, this modesty? I know we, when we hear that word, we tend to associate it with the necessary modesty of clothing that has to be there to protect the holy purity, holy holy chastity. We do preach it, mind, you know, there, there's a, a, dress, a way of dressing as a Christian, as a Catholic. It's to veil the body in the appropriate way. There are guidelines, well, especially for church, but even outside the church, to observe those guidelines of modesty and moderation. Our late lady, needless to say, is a most perfect <laughs> example of this. 
But let's regard other aspects of her image. Look at her eyes that are downcast. This is also modest. A custody of the eyes. How much do we not need that? So many dangers. Uh, so we have to guard our eyes. Our lady is, she's definitely looking down at Juan Diego. Her eyes are downcast. But that again is that modesty. It's not just a, a dress, it's also a behavior. You see, that's, that's what I'm trying to reflect upon here. Her hands, they're not in a undisciplined, you know, sort of floating way. They're, they're very in intentionally joined before her. They're showing us that when we pray, let us keep our hands folded as the rubric that the, that the priest is directed to have at the altar. Unless his hands are occupied with you know, something else. It's a prayerful, moderate, modest position of the hands. So the whole figure of Our Lady speaks this moderation. Now, we, the, 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 the Tuma doesn't speak to us, but we know that Our, Lord, Our Lady used, had an economy of words, so to speak. She didn't. There isn't you know, page after page after page of what she said to Don Diego. It seemed to be short, conceit, concise, to the point. And it's a reminder to us to bridle our tongues. Remember what St. James says? If a man offend not in speech, that man is perfect. You're a living Saint, you can never offend in speech. So many ways to commit sins of the tongue, philosophy, uh, you know, uh, saying words that we shouldn't, uh, being too have too much levity. There's many a sin of the tongue that can be committed in all our lives. The Lady of Guadalupe teaches us the moderation of the tongue. And what's good for us to do is sometimes if we want to say a perfectly innocent thing, just hold back and don't say it, just for the sake of practicing that virtue. We always give free reign to whatever comes to our mind. We're going to be following the sin of the tongue. So as I said, again, Our Lady of Guadalupe is such a perfect expression of today's message. Let your modesty, let your moderation, it's impulse to rejoice in that, because that leads to true happiness. And he says, let all people see it. Lead by example, practice moderation in your daily life. The fourth point, the Lord is not. This is literally and perfectly fulfilled. These words of today's introit and epistle, the Lord is not because in the image of Our Lady Guadalupe, Our Lady is carrying the Lord. She is pregnant. We talk about the Lord being nigh, he's right. The Aztecs could see right away. They picked up on things that the Spaniards didn't. Again, she was appealing to these, to, to their knowledge of, of, of what they did of, as, as Aztec customs, and reinforcing good ones. Obviously, they're trying to help them to overcome it, the bad ones that they had had. But she was dressed as a, as a pregnant mother. This is why Our Lady of Guadalupe is a very special patroness of the pro-life uh, effort and movement. And we need to pray for this and work for it, this horror of, of killing children in the womb has to come to an end. It is it's such a horrendous uh, 
murderous things going on throughout the world. I think we need our living brother desperately to inspire people with that awareness of this and the sanctity of life that nobody on his or her own authority can take the life of another. And the most innocent person is the child. Yes, the child has original sin, but not guilty of any crime that would justify its dismemberment, this being chopped to pieces or killed in some other way. So, just wanted to share these thoughts with you on this Gaudete Sunday, our Lady of Guadalupe. Not only is this the time of the year that we think very much about her, but um, she is the perfect example of today's liturgy. Rejoice with your life. Love her. Grow in your knowledge, your awareness, your devotion. And, uh,